Okay, uh, we'll get get started here. Uh, man, <laughs> hard to believe. Just you know, not knowing if this team would even, you know, if we'd even get to play. Um, you know, I told the team in the locker room after. You, you remember two specific moments. Uh, you know, one moment when we had to send our whole team down uh, home after uh, after having only one spring practice, not knowing what was next, um, and then. You know, in that locker room in Ames, Iowa, when you were 0 and 2 in the conference, and I told them, you know, a place like OU, man, there's nowhere to hide. You know, it's not like, well, if we just go off and don't, you know, and have a bad season, that people aren't going to pay attention. They always pay attention to OU. I mean, this is such a, a national powerhouse, and and there's just there's never anywhere to hide in this program. So you got really one choice, and you got to step up. And uh, I think everybody in our locker room believed that this was possible, and at that point, and. What a tremendous run it's been. You know, we've had to win games in different ways. Today was no different. We've had to have different players step up. Um, we've had to make key plays. And um, um, just, yeah, it's a little surreal. Again, just all of these are. I mean, just sit back and think six in a row, and that just doesn't get done in college football very often. It's so hard. And, and you know, we as coaches that have been, that have been here through it, all of our players, our staff, our fans, I mean, everybody that that is a part of this football program, that cares about this football program, that roots for this football program, and better appreciate what these what what this is. I mean, this is this is awesome, awesome stuff by this team individually and our teams over the last several years. And um, you know, it's um that's just a great, great feeling right now. It's uh you know, feels good to be the champ. We'll go to questions. We'll begin with Ryan Aver of the Oklahoma, and we'll go to Jason Carson. Yeah, Lincoln, wanted to ask you about Trey Brown, uh, not only the interception, but the two kickoff returns yep. for him. Just, uh, it seems like every time in this game, he comes up with some massive play for you all to help turn the tide. He did. No, he did. I mean, the two kickoff returns were huge. Um, we didn't have many opportunities there this year, and uh, – you know, which is a good thing, and uh, as well as we played defensively, and and uh, yeah, he just, you know, I thought we fit some of them up really well, and he's got such bursts, we were able to get him loose, and and uh, you know, we ended up scoring after both of those drives. They were they were big time plays, and both of them came, you know, after Iowa State had some momentum, like you said. So they were those were important plays, and great job by him and our whole kickoff return team, and then and then obviously yeah, the pick ended. I mean, it was a great individual play. Um, you know, very reminiscent of uh, over in the Cotton Bowl, you know, just a couple of months ago. So uh, no, I'm really proud of that kid, all he's had to overcome. And he's obviously, you know, been a really, really good player for us and, and I think really taking another step this year. Appreciate it, Marcus. And the Athletic, and then Kerry Murdoch. Yeah, Lincoln, I, I know all these are special, but given all the things that you just, you just articulated in your opening statement, the suspensions, the – Having a game canceled, having another game postponed, all those things. Is this the most satisfying of the Big 12 titles for you? God, it's hard to say. I mean, they're like you said, they're all so different. I mean, I I felt you know tremendous excitement of, uh, after each one of them, but this one does feel different in that way. It, it does. It, it's uh, maybe the most unlikely, I, I guess you might say, just with all we had to overcome. Um, both across the country, every team, everybody, and then, and then you know, specific to our group, I mean, we had to overcome a lot. And, you know, it's just hard to find a way to get it done even in one year. So to think that we could continue to do it has been – no, it is. It's, it is. It's a little surreal right now. Um, I, I, just the, the pride in not just the players but just the whole program. I mean, it took every single person making a sacrifice for this to even be possible and every single person to – Get out of their comfort zone and do everything that they could, and and it took that. It would not have happened without that. Three more knocks, sooner scoop, and then Gary Neiman. Hey Lincoln, how unique is this game to you, and that you just made decisions based on a lot of confidence in your defense, and it, it ended up paying dividends, you know, at certain points. Yeah, no, it's uh, just a little bit the flow of the game. Uh, you know, I thought we were playing pretty well defensively the majority of the game. Um, you know, felt like we, you know, that's a good offense, obviously a good quarterback, and, and but felt like we were on top of things really the whole day. And, uh, you know, we had some periods where we played good offensively and some periods where we didn't play good offensively. And now it's there were some 
you know, some some close decisions there, but certainly how well we were playing was a was a big factor. Um, and we did a nice job, you know, on the punt teams being able to pin them down there and play the field position game a little bit. And you know, again, you got to win in different ways. And and uh, our defense, special teams, certainly gave us an opportunity to to make some of those decisions by how well they played. Thanks, Lincoln. Tell us the world. And then John Hoover. Lincoln, I'd like you to go back and uh, and, and reference what you said a, a bit ago about you hope that the, the base, the fan base, gets what this team did. Uh, I, I know it wasn't any work of art this season. Of course, it hasn't been. The season's been hard on everybody. And I don't, I don't know where you guys are going to end up in terms of your postseason. But just to persevere like you have, uh, even for a base that's used to the, the success that your program has produced, the need to, to, to see it for what it is, just if you wouldn't mind reiterating that. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I would just encourage everybody to think of their own personal hardships, you know, that they've had during this pandemic. I mean, this pandemic, we're, we it obviously wasn't just bad for us. I mean, it's been challenging for each and every one of us. And, uh, you know, and everybody's talked about, you know, how negative that 2020 has been. And, and, you know, just it's almost kind of become a catchphrase now. And, and I do think, though, the adversity also provides an unbelievable opportunity to do something special. And uh, that's how we've tried to look at it this entire time through anything that came up was how awesome would it be to come back and win this in this year? Because everybody will remember, like you said, I don't know what will happen the rest of the way. Uh, but I just think I think everybody will remember who won it in this year uh, because it was the most challenging year any of us have ever had. We'll go to John Hoover with SI Sooners and then Keegan Renault. Hey Lincoln, uh, I want to ask you about I want to ask you about third downs. Uh, one of eleven, I think, was the final tally on third down. Uh, I get you're turning the game over to your defense and and special teams and stuff like that. But um, what what do you think was going on wrong wise for uh, being being unable to convert third downs? Um, well, the biggest problem was most of them were long yardage, um, so we didn't put ourselves in very many. You know, great situations there. Uh, the combination of things, you know, didn't uh, had a couple of times where we had some stuff open and didn't protect good. Uh, had a couple of competitive plays uh, that we thought we had real opportunities to make that we didn't make. A couple of times I had bad calls. I mean, um, I don't know. I'll answer that one tomorrow. I'm gonna enjoy being the champ today. We'll go to Keegan Renault with Sooners Wire and then Brandon Drum. Keegan, you're muted. Uh, we can't hear you, Keegan. We'll come back to you. Brandon Drum with OU Insider, and then James Hale. Yeah, Lincoln, uh, last year you guys had to have a stop on the defense on the big fourth down play against Baylor. This year as well, the defense had to step up to make another big stop. At what point during the season last year and through this year did you start to feel like you could see the culture, the defense, kind of gaining that confidence to where they feel like they can go out there and make those type of big plays in those big moments? Yeah, I mean, I've, you know, I think you just continue to evaluate that each year, and and, and not necessarily just with games, but just in the games within the game and, and the matchups and and just at the flow of the game, and that's you know that's where. I've always gotten into you know people you know this and that about analytics and yeah analytics are great but they they can't measure all those things all the time and you got to know your team and so uh, you know I, and I'll say this though our, our our team you know we've been in now I guess four of these here uh, our team's had a history of playing pretty darn well defensively in all four of those um, and uh, you know we certainly you know did it again tonight uh, or today um, but you know win championship football games you got to you got to play pretty good defense, and uh, you know we've been able to do it in the past ones, and certainly did it again today. Okay, James Hill with KRUS and then Barry Trammell. James, you know, Lincoln, yeah, Lincoln. You know, offense is so fascinating. Uh, you know, you you can't you you know you're struggling to get drops going in the second half. Then when you need one at the end of the game, you get one. I mean, can you take us through what was going through your mind in the second half? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of battling, you know, some frustration on my part because we felt like we were close to so many, 
good things in the second half and and just uh and they're a good defense i mean obviously we know that um they're they're a very good defense and uh you're going to you're going to get some um we made some big plays but again we had some opportunities that we were just a tick off and in the second half and when you're a tick off against a good group you know it, it's going to make things hard and then you continue to put yourself in, in long yarded situations not there but it, it it's it's always difficult i don't care who you're playing uh but I, I don't. I think there was still continued belief. You know, we knew we were going to have to go score again to win the game. There was still continued belief, and uh, obviously got the you know the boost from the kickoff return and had a really nice drive there. Obviously, I think had a really good chance to catch that last ball and 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 finish it off right there. But no, I, we we hung in there. We battled. Um, you know, we got to get better there. There's no question about it. Um, you know, and I would have felt like I would have felt like that if we just scored 62. I mean, that's just you always feel like you can get better, and and uh, but found a way to do enough to get it done. Okay, let's go to Barry Trammell, the Oklahoma, and then we'll try Keegan again. Barry. Yeah, Lincoln, it was a uh, little bit of a rough start for the Big 12. Some losses to Sun Belt teams. You got off to the 0-2 conference start, but at the end of the day, America seemed to love Iowa State. They showed up well today. You beat them. You think this was a good, sort of a good presentation for the Big 12 as a whole? Oh, absolutely. And then I think, you know, people need to make sure and educate themselves on why a lot of those things happened early in the season. I mean, you take this team that we played, you take Kansas State, you take us early. I mean, we were sitting there playing with depleted rosters when a lot of people either weren't playing or were, or were postponing, canceling games. And, Honestly, I mean, those three teams you mentioned all right there would have been well within their rights to to postpone or cancel some of those early games, and we didn't do it because we were trying to get a season in. And so, uh, you know, that's 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 part of it. Um, you know, that's those are good football teams, but there's no way Iowa State loses that first game if they've got personnel, and there's no way that Kansas State loses that first game if they got personnel, in my opinion. I don't say no way. I don't want to have disrespect to – was Arkansas State, Louisiana? I don't want to say no way, but a, a lot less likely. And so, uh, and we were in a hole ourselves, obviously, early in the season with personnel as well. So, uh, no, nah, this is this has a good football team, man. That, that team right there that we played, you know, the quarterback, third year going at it. You know, really, I mean, the, you know, those are NFL level tight ends, receivers. Obviously, the backs damn good. The defense really super experienced. I, you know, that's probably. That's definitely one of the best teams that we've played in a championship game in all the all the years. Um, they're easily, easily right up there at the top um, of of you know the best and most complete teams that we've played. So no, I thought um, you know for the Big 12 to get the games in that we did, have a great championship game, is a heck of a finish. Okay, we'll try Keegan Renault again and go to Caleb Curry. Yeah, Lincoln, I'm, I'm just curious. You guys got to 11 turnovers in the last three games, or last five games, sorry, uh, which is at your two takeaway average. Just what the takeaways equal victory mindset that you guys have had? I know it's kind of simple, but it seems like it's really paid off here down the stretch for you. No, it has. I mean, I think I would just say is we've, we've capitalized on the opportunities and we've created more opportunities. I mean, a, a lot of credit goes to the front, you know, and how disruptive that we've been there. You know, we did another good job even today on Hall. I mean, only 83 yards, you know, 3.4 carry for him was, was huge. We especially did a good job on him on the second half. Um, you know, made them a little bit more one-dimensional, which we've been able to do to some teams. And then, you know, when you can get pressure like we can, you're going to have opportunities. And then our secondary, our linebackers, I mean, we've made some great plays on the ball this year. Um, so just we've created more opportunities and we've taken advantage of them. And it's been a, obviously a, a, a difference maker for our team. Okay, Kill McCurry, who you do, and then Kirk Bowles. Hey, Lincoln, can you hear me? Yes. All right. You're, you're 10 games in now. If you were to, you know, make a report card for Spencer Rattler through 10 games, how would you grade it and how do you think he did today? Oh, I thought he probably played his best game of the year today. Um, I thought he was poised. Um, I thought he did a great job in the scramble situations through some elite throws. Um, uh, I thought he made good decisions with the ball. Really, I mean, he was in the right place a lot. I mean, I, I, you know, he his eyes were where he was supposed to be. He went where he was supposed to go. Um, the really the a, a big, big portion of the day in Iowa State, as we knew they probably would, showed us some different looks, and um, I thought he handled it well. I mean, these are big moments. I mean, you you go win a four-overtimer in the Red River game, you come here and, and play like he did, and 
win the Big 12 championship here. I mean, these are these are big moments for a young guy, and he's certainly not afraid of them. He's gonna he's got so much room to grow, and he's gonna get you know have a chance to really get better if he'll keep his head down and keep working. But you know, for a redshirt freshman, this is a pretty darn good start. A few more here, Kirk Bowles, Ross American Statesman. Yeah, Lee, congratulations. Uh, the whole league played a lot better defense this year. I yeah. wonder if that's a, a one-year aberration or is that a growing trend? And especially with y'all, y'all seem to be getting more balanced. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me uh, just with some of the quality of coaches that have come into this league. Uh, you know, deep, I think we've got some really good defensive coordinators, um, some really difficult schemes. Uh, I think the quality of defensive linemen in this league has, it, in my opinion, um, gone up. I, I, I feel like early in the league there were times where, you know, there was a couple of really good defensive linemen here and there, but not everybody had them. Um, whereas now, you know, I, I can't really remember many teams this year where we didn't go in having a, a, a really solid, if not a whole lot of respect, a solid amount or even more of respect for the opposition's defensive line. So, and this was one of those groups here today. So I think that's been a big part of it. And uh, no, you're right. I mean, it's, it's really, to me, two years in a row that, that defenses have really, really been strong. you got several of the top defenses in the country in this league right now. Two more. Let's go back to Kerry Murdoch and then John Hooper. Lincoln, I want to ask you about it because all the fans were talking about it, your players were talking about it. Um, what were your thoughts when you first saw the All Big 12 team? Um, <laughs> was there some disappointment? Was there anger? Did you think maybe there was some gamesmanship involved there? I'm glad they did it. Um, whoever did it, I need to I need to send them a little a gift basket. Uh, well, it's all the other coaches. Right? Uh, it was. I, I appreciate all those guys. No, it was. Uh, now, yeah, we were – it's not why we do it, but we were pissed. Uh, disappointed for our players because we had some guys that no doubt should have been on that. And I mean, if you look at all Big 12 team, it's amazing we won a game. So, I mean, I, that's uh, – you know, I know it was a weird year and, you know, some guys didn't play some games and this and that. But, you know, you got the best defense in the league here that doesn't have one guy on the first team. Uh, I, no, we, we, we missed the boat there. But, you know what, at the end of the day – you give us a choice between all Big 12 teams and, and this trophy. I know what each one of us in that room will choose, and uh, I, I know the kind of players we have in there. And there's a there's a lot of first team all league and even more players in that locker room right now. Appreciate it, Lincoln. Mm-hmm. Hoover. Hey, Lincoln. Need to ask about uh, Chandler Morris and the touchdown. The tri- it looked like a trick play or at least a change of pace. What was that like preparing that play and then getting it uh, executed like that? Uh yeah, just. You know, one of those that, that worked, and it was a, a big moment. You know, you never know if one like that, you're even, you never know how the game will go, if you'll even have an opportunity. And then here we go, all of a sudden, right there on the first drive, we, you know, we get it in a good spot to run it. And no, I had a lot of confidence in him. I had confidence in him and, and Seth. I mean, here you are in the Big 12 championship game at AT&T Stadium, first drive, and, and you uh, pop a true freshman quarterback and a true freshman tailback in there, and they go in and execute it well. So, um, you know, I'm just trying to take advantage of every skill set on our roster, and those guys were ready for the moment. Okay, I said that was the last one. I'm going to sneak in one more from James Hill. Hey, I appreciate it. Lincoln, Trey John Bridges played in the game. Uh, did you get the same kind of emotional boost that you got when Ramondre and, and Perkins were allowed to play? Did you get that with Trey John D- yeah. last night or the day before? Yeah, no, they guys were thrilled. Um, you know, we found out actually about halfway through our practice yesterday morning, so we didn't. You know, we weren't able to do a whole lot with him. Um, I guess, I don't know, I guess something magically changed at the NCAA where you know, now all of a sudden he was going to be eligible. So I, who, I had no rhyme or reason. I'm, I was thrilled he was able to play. I, I mean, it was great for us, but, man, I was just so excited for that kid, man, just to be able to go out there and play and get all this behind him. Um, and, yeah, it was good to have him in there. Um, you know, he's going to have a chance to be a big part of our offense, certainly going forward. But, no, I was. The kids, the, the team loves Trajan. We all do. And, and uh, yeah, great to have him back. Just, again, I know we've talked about it now. The great thing is we don't have to talk about it anymore. But, um, you know, what those kids have been through, it, it was hard, and, and uh, especially for him. So it meant a lot to have him back.